Going into this offseason, one of the biggest rumors in the NFL was that Jamal Adams wants out of New York. He wants to go to another team, really wants to go to a contender if the Jets were not willing to give him an extension on his rookie contract. Well, it seems like things may have come to a fruition over the past couple of days. It's been reported that Jamal Adams has requested a trade out of New York because they are not willing to give him an extension he believes he deserves. Right now, the big contract to look at in the safeties is Eddie Jackson of the Chicago Bears making right now about $14 million. So, it stands to reason Jamal Adams would want about north of $14 million. Whether that seems like a plausible number or not is not up to me to decide. It's up to GMs. It's up to how teams think he will fit in their system. If they think he's worth giving $14 million, who am I to say no? If teams don't think it's worth that, Jamal Adams... Might not be going anywhere. He might be staying with New York. But I'm Nick O'Dwyer, here for the 10th inning, giving you what you need to know on this whole Jamal Adams situation right now. What teams he could possibly go to if he does get traded. If the Jets are even interested in trading him. And what the Jets would be looking for, for a trade. Ever since Jamal Adams entered the lead, he's been one of the top safeties in the NFL. Really last year, and really since two years ago, he's elevated to one of the top three spots in the safety game. Now when you look at safeties, there are two major differences in positions at safeties and everyone always brings this up when arguing who's the greatest safety of all time. For this, I'll just bring up Ed Reed, Troy Palomalu. They play two different positions. Reed was a free safety and one of the greatest ball hawks that the game has ever seen. Troy Palomalu, strong safety. He liked playing up in the box. He was a fearsome tackler and that's more like what Jamal Adams is. Jamal Adams is a strong safety. He likes playing up. He likes being in on tackles. His one, if you really want to say big weakness in the NFL, is his coverage game. He's very good at wrapping up. Yes, he can cover. I'm not saying he can't cover, but compared to the likes of Ed Reed, some of the other great free safeties in NFL history, he's at a bit of a disadvantage. Either way though, Adams has proven he is one of the best strong safeties in the game today, and he is two years remaining on his rookie contract. He's looking for an extension before he hits free agency, otherwise he's gone. So let's start with this. Do the Jets want to trade Jamal Adams? Well, the obvious answer is no. The Jets are not going out and specifically seeking trades. If any request is coming in, it's just that. It's a request coming in. They're not going out there looking for offers. Offers will be coming to them. They don't want to get rid of one of the best safeties in the game today. And if they do, it won't be their choice. It would have to be a deal so good, they would be crazy to turn it down. Adams apparently wants the Jets' commitment to a long-term contract before this upcoming season starts. Otherwise, he was going to request a trade. That seems like what has happened right now. It seems like those two are at an impasse when it comes to what kind of contract they're looking for and the Jets and Adams just aren't agreeing. So now we've established that the Jets don't want to get rid of him, but if an offer comes in so good, they will think about getting rid of him and possibly get rid of him. Now, does Jamal Adams want to get traded? Again, reportedly, Adams has requested a trade because it seems like they are just at an impasse over the contract details. They're not coming together. The Jets did pick up his fifth-year option for $9.9 million in May, giving both sides more time to agree to a deal. But again, Adams wants a long-term deal in place before the 2020 season. So now we go what the Jets are really looking for for an offer. Again, they're not the ones trying to form a trade in the whole Adams situation. They are willing to listen to offers, but that's it. But what's the right price for Jamal Adams? Now we saw two big name Pro Bowl defensive backs last year get traded. One was a bit more lopsided than the other. The Jacksonville Jaguars traded Jalen Ramsey to the Los Angeles Rams, they ended up getting two first-round picks for him. The Baltimore Ravens and the Los Angeles Rams then also traded for Los Angeles Rams' Marcus Peters. That only cost the Ravens an inside linebacker and a fourth-round pick. So those two were pretty lopsided. Where will Jamal Adams fall within this whole spectrum? Well, I would say if the Jets were really intent on trading him, he would fall closer to the Marcus Peters and Ravens deal of it because if the Jets truly wanted to get something big out of the trade for Jamal Adams, they know teams looking for Adams would have a bit of an advantage because, well, the Jets want to get rid of him. Why would we offer him the best deal we have? But knowing that the Jets don't necessarily want to get rid of him, the teams looking to get him are at a disadvantage. They'll have to give up a lot more when looking for Adams. 
And I'm not here to say, what should you give up for Adams? Is it two first round picks? Personally, I wouldn't do that. Either way, there has to be at least one first or second round pick involved for any kind of trade to occur. So now we know, as it looks like right now, if a trade will occur, the Jets have all the leverage on the trade because they don't want to get rid of him. But now let's look at teams who could potentially trade for Jamal Adams. Let's start with the Baltimore Ravens. Now, if the Baltimore Ravens trade for Jamal Adams, it'll have to be, I'll say, a pretty big trade, but it would just make their secondary even more explosive. Not only would they have Earl Thomas, Marlon Humphrey, and Marcus Peters, but now they would have Jamal Adams add into a bolstered secondary. That would just be amazing for the Ravens. But partly because the Ravens secondary is already so big, I don't know if they will make this trade. Otherwise, they would have to make a pretty demanding trade. The Ravens, I would assume, most definitely have an offer in mind. And if the Jets aren't willing to agree to that, I don't know if the Ravens would go any further. Now you have the Dallas Cowboys, who actually tried to trade for Adams at the trade deadline last year when they offered a first-round pick for Adams. This kind of seems like the dark horse underdog team right now to trade for Adams. Mainly because of cap space. They're still trying to sign Dak. Everyone knows what's going on. They signed Amari. They signed Zeke. Cap space is tight, so even if Jamal Adams goes, he's not going to get the contract he wants. So what says he stays there? And if he's not going to stay there, why would you sign him for a loan contract? That's why it seems like the Cowboys are a dark horse. Now the Kansas City Chiefs. If the Kansas City Chiefs add Jamal Adams, they already have the best offense in the league. They already have the best quarterback in the league in Patrick Mahomes. If you add Jamal Adams to that defense, that secondary gets stronger. That whole defense gets stronger. They were already the Super Bowl winner last year with the great offense and a good defense. Jamal Adams would make that defense even better. But what would the Chiefs have to give up to get Jamal Adams to come true? Well, they would probably have to get rid of either Juan Thornhill or Tyron Matthew. And Tyron Matthew, not going anywhere. Are they willing to give up on Thornhill though? I don't necessarily think so. If they do, it'll definitely shake things up. But I don't see it happening. Now you have the San Francisco 49ers. The 49ers already had one of the best defenses last year, and adding Jamal Adams would only make that better. With Jacquisi Tart heading into the final year of his contract, this could be the time to trade for Adams because you're either looking at signing Tart to a long-term deal, or if you get Adams, you'll sign Adams to a long-term deal. I won't necessarily say it's a win-win for the 49ers, but it kind of seems like a win-win situation if the 49ers go out there and trade for Adams because it does seem like a place where he could easily get the long-term contract he's looking for. Now there's one more team who I think could realistically make a deal for Adams, and that's the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles already added to their secondary this year, adding Darius Slay at cornerback, but they did lose Malcolm Jenkins. Right now, Jenkins is not the player that he once was. He's not the player of Jamal Adams' caliber. But if they could add Jamal Adams, man, that secondary will be scary. And defense was one of the biggest problems in Philadelphia last year. The only problem in Philadelphia, cap space is tight, kind of like some of these other teams. So let's say they get a trade done. What are the chances he's going to actually re-sign with them? What are the chances they have something to re-sign him to? I don't know. My three biggest places where I think he could go are the Ravens, are the 49ers, are Philadelphia, because they just all seem logical. And for Philadelphia, again, it might be a bit tight in cap space, but I think they could work around it they could get something done. San Francisco, Baltimore, and Philadelphia, all Super Bowl contenders. They would love to have Adams. I'm pretty sure Adams would love to play for all of them. So there you have it. That's really all you need to know right now on the whole Jamal Adams front and my opinions. I will keep you updated if anything new happens on the Jamal Adams front, but as of right now, it seems like things will go a bit slower for a while. Let me know down in the comment section where you all think Jamal Adams is going to go, if he's going to go anywhere. Do you think the Jets trade him? Why or why not? For Nico Dwyer and the 10th inning.